Let's look at the equilibrium calculation for this schematic reaction. I have A molecules and B molecules reacting to form A2B molecules. So two moles of A and a mole of B form an A2B. And I've got some schematic initial conditions here, the B molecules in yellow and the A molecules in red. This equilibrium for this reaction has an equilibrium constant of 0.25. So what would this schematic picture look like at equilibrium? Well, we can look at that. So the reaction quotient for this mass action expression is the products over the reactants. And remember, we raise everything to its stoichiometric coefficient as the power. So A will be raised to the power of 2, and B as another reactant in the denominator. Products over reactants is our reaction quotient. If I look at that in terms of the initial conditions, the initial conditions are, well, there is no A2B yet, so that concentration is zero. There are three units, or a partial pressure of three for the A, and a partial pressure of five for the B units. So this is zero, K is zero for this. Now, that's less than the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is 0.25. And when Q is less than K, we need to form more products. We need to make the numerator bigger so Q approaches the larger K value. So we anticipate we're going to make some products here. We can do the calculation, though. We can say, well, here's my quotient. It's going to equal K of 0.25. I expect a to B to be produced, and we'll lose a little A and a little B. Let's see if we can do that analytically. Here's the reaction and the quotient expression for Q. Initially, I have three units. We can talk about these as gas phase reactions. So this is a partial pressure of three for A, a partial pressure of five for B, and the initial partial pressure of the A to B molecules is zero. There's going to be some change as I go towards equilibrium. I don't know how that big that change is, so I'll say, well, the change is a little bit of B reacts. Some X moles of B or X partial pressure of B reacts. For every X of B that reacts, twice as many moles or twice the partial pressure of A will react, because I know they react in 2 to 1. For every B that's produced, uh, reacts, I'll produce one A to B molecule. So the change as I approach equilibrium looks like this. The equilibrium conditions then will be this initial condition minus the change I got to equilibrium. So the equilibrium partial pressure of A will be 3 minus 2x. The equilibrium partial pressure of B will be 5 minus x. And the equilibrium partial pressure of A to B will be x. Now I can take those equilibrium partial pressures in terms of x, and x turns out to represent exactly the partial pressure of A to B. I can put those into my equilibrium expression. I know the equilibrium constant, and now I have three equilibrium values in terms of a single parameter x. So if I put those in, x is the partial pressure at equilibrium of A to B. The partial pressure 3 minus 2x is the partial pressure of A to the power 2. And B is 5 minus x at equilibrium. So now we need to solve this for x. If you look at that, it's, it's actually a rather complicated expression in x. But it's actually kind of simple to solve if we use the guessing method. We can guess values for x and approach the appropriate value. So if we just guess x is 1 and then guess x is 2 and see if it solves for 0.25. So I'll guess that x is 1. I'll put 1 in for x. That'll give me x, uh, 1 over 3 minus 2 squared and 5 minus 1. And if I look at that, that is 1 over 4. And luckily enough, my first guess 
I have a Q that's equal to K. I have this quotient that is at equilibrium. So once one B molecule reacts, the system comes to equilibrium. So now I can draw the new schematic. My X is equal to 1, so I can calculate the equilibrium concentrations or the equilibrium partial pressures. The equilibrium partial pressure is 3 minus 2x or 3 minus 1. So the equilibrium partial pressure of A is 1. Equilibrium partial pressure of B is 4. The equilibrium partial pressure of A to B is 1. So my initial schematic looks like this. One of the B reacts with two A's to form my equilibrium situation. Here's my A to B molecule. My A's have reacted to form that A to B, and I have B and A and A to B in equilibrium. So this is the schematic of this reaction as it proceeds and stops at equilibrium. Now, the reaction will proceed in forward and reverse directions equivalently now. So if this A to B molecule decomposes, another a to B will form. So if this produces some B's and A's, then other, other B's and A's will form more A to B. The equilibrium will be dynamic, but from the macroscopic sense, the partial pressures will be constant. The equilibrium expression is a constant. So this is how we use equilibria and expressions to solve for the equilibrium situation for a chemical reaction.